Hey everybody, this is Stephen Key with patent, patent attorney Damon Kelly here giving the good stuff. Now, I'm getting serious here. Always. Damon, I'm really serious because there's something that's happened in the okay. last couple of years that I didn't think it would come back to bite us, but apparently has. These, oh. these new laws. This <laughs> first first to it's really first to file, right? That, that's what it It's 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 first inventor to file. Okay, but it's but this was supposed to be a good thing, right? Yes. Is it a good thing? It's supposed to be a great thing. I Well, I think you don't know if it's a good thing or not. It, you know, I think we still need to get a little further down the line. There are some problems, right? I mean, it, as all new laws do. What it did was bring us more into conformance with the rest of the world. So our everything got a little clearer. So that's a good thing, right? No. And the second no. thing... It, was, no. no. What was wrong with the old system? It worked fine. The rest of the world should follow us. But that's, that's, my, <laughs> that's my personal opinion. But go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, okay. So th 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 it, on the surface of it, that sounds great, right? First inventor, or, you know, first, whoever invented first gets it. Here's the problem with that. That was causing all kinds of problems because how do you decide who the first invent, who is first to invent? Let's say some guy's over in, you know, working on his invention in his closet and he's got a book that says he invented first and then somebody else goes in and files, an honest inventor goes in and files, and then this guy swoops in out of nowhere and says, hey, I was first to invent. Then you got to decide who was first and it's really tricky. It's like, well, how much weight do we put that? How about the guy who hurried to the patent office trying to innovate, trying to, you know, promote the sciences? That's a problem. That's really difficult. Whereas whoever is first to file... Well, that's easy. He got here first. He's ready to go. He or she. Okay. All right. That sounds great. But there's a lot more to this, right? <laughs> there's there were quite a few changes. Okay. But I, I, I think that's I think that is the most important well, well, thing. I mean, I, I I think it gets people where they live. Okay. Right? But, I mean, but Damon, tell me about what's happening when people are challenging patents now at the USPTO. Well, you can you can challenge without being a party. So there's ex party and inter, inter parties uh, proceedings. But what it boils down to is, if you have a patent in process and it's been published, somebody sees it and they go, "Hey, wait a minute! Look at that thing! Is is that looks like our thing?" They can send a challenge, and by challenge, they can file the paperwork with the necessary documentation and challenge your application while it's in process. No. And that's a that's a new thing. It's it's pretty it's a little bit scary. No. Okay, so honestly. I've got a story here I've got to show, share and I'm not going to say who it is because it's pretty private, but there's someone I know, um, great product, had a patent for 12 years, making a lot of money, Damon, a lot of money. Yeah. And yeah. Someone, a couple companies decided to challenge it after 12 years. And wow. they could even hide. They didn't even have to say who they were. Yeah. And so he's been fighting it. Now, what's really weird about it, they kind of freeze the patent. In fact, they don't freeze it. They, they kind of hold it. And time is still ticking on it. Okay. Um, but they challenged it. And it did cost them a little bit of money to challenge it, maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 or something. But in the meantime, this gentleman now has to defend it, has to fight the USPTO. And it's cost him $300,000. Ouch. So I, I, I'm wondering why, I mean, I went to federal court, right? When, when I had a problem, you know, chasing, you know, and with my technology, I ended up federal court, you know, with you know, suing a little toy company, but I was in federal court and I felt that was more balanced. But this whole thing about the USPTO being able to make decisions, I don't know. I think they took the power, a little bit of the power away from the individual in the court system and gave it to USPTO. Yes. <laughs> it, you're describing a problem, problem that's kind of going on U.S. wide, which is administrative actions versus judicial actions. And that's a whole big ball of gnarliness. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's not a good thing. I don't think that's a good thing. But there is judicial review down the line. I mean, you can appeal the decision. In the meantime, it costs them a bunch of money. It, um, it, it, but here's the thing, Stephen. What you, gotta, what you have to think about now as a patent owner is... How important is it to me to make a deal or to be right? 
And maybe that may, is a question that you're, the guy you know, whose story you know should have asked himself because he's defending his patent. It's like, well, maybe all they wanted was a licensing deal and they wanted to get better terms, so they pulled this nonsense. And so you say, well, heck, I'm gonna spend $300,000. I'll just give them a better licensing deal and we'll call it a day and move on. Yeah, I, And that's, I, I don't, that's kind of a problem. Yeah, I don't know all the details. I think he had licensed it to another company, so they had an exclusive. And I think, I yeah. think what happened, because they challenged it, they produced, now their products are on the market competing with it. During that yeah. five year kind of trying to figure everything out. I don't know, Damon, it kind of got weird on me about that because it, it seemed like it's taken some, some value away from us individuals and especially um, startups that, um, and there's some other, we could talk about this forever. I just got clued into it because it's, it's really affecting people that I know. And I'm not a lot of people, you guys, by the way. Um, and I think, you, you know, personally, patents are, are, are great. I don't think you need a patent on everything. I think you license ideas even without patents. So these are kind of an unusual situation. But I do believe that the, some of these big companies are pushing us around a little bit, Damon. Is that true? I, I absolutely agree. In fact, the whole troll argument that kind of came up a few years ago when, you know, this legislation against trolls, people who don't actually manufacture, that was all started by the big companies. And, you know, they were trying to crush the little guys who were trying to come up and doing the same practices that they uh, recently practiced. So, I mean, that's the way it's always been. That's the way it's always going to be. So we got to figure out how to work with that. I think that's the take home lesson. Yeah, I think for me, you know, it's, to me, it's really simple. You guys, you get out there as fast as you can. You, you file a provisional patent application, you get a licensee, and you sell, sell, sell. Because at the end of the day, yeah. I don't think it's about protection. I don't think it's about fighting in court. I think it's about selling product, Damon. Am I right? I agree completely. Right. And when it gets rough and, you know, if, if it's the end of the product cycle, you know, move on. Make, make whatever deal you need to make and move on. Don't get tied to your product so much that you can't let go when it's time to let go. There's a time to fight and there's a time to let go. You got to really be aware of that. Yeah, and also I love what you said earlier that, hey, it's better to cut a deal early and just move on, right? And and yeah. give someone a license and just move on. You, you want to avoid every. You want to avoid this completely. It's just. It, it, yes. It's a headache. It's, talk about having a pebble in your shoe. Just like having a rock in your shoe. You, you, you can't get it out. Um, so in, the only people that win in litigation are the attorneys, and I hate saying that, but it's true because we get paid whether you win or not. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So, Damon, once again, thank you very much for coming on. Everybody, so thanks. keep watching, keep listening. And if you need help with your projects, check out inventright.com. We've got a coaching program you're going to absolutely love. Keep watching the videos. Keep, just do it. Right, Damon? Just get off the couch and do it. Get out there. All right. Thanks, guys.